Dit is het eerste glas, dus is een... Uh... We doen de video is altijd in het Engels. Oh. Eigenlijk. I can change to English, that's fine. <laughs> Oh, I was rolling. Ik vond het nieuw dan. Kind of rolling. Ja, je ja, ging ja, hartstikke lekker. This was nice. Just keep on running. Ja, ja. I can do it again. Welcome, 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 guild members. So, we have two glasses here. Uh, new merch. They are uh, available at the webshop. The idea is that you can, you can throw it really well, opens up the aroma, um, and it centers towards the middle. So you can smell a little bit from the glass away. I will show you later how to do that. Oh, it's a full box again. There we go again. Shall I just line them up again? We can make a selection of the groups and then uh, taste a couple. Yep. Is that a good idea? Look, box here. Ooh, the stouts gaan we left open, denk ik. So this box comes with seven IPAs. You might think, Rowan, did you lose your mind? Can you not count anymore? But no, there's actually one in the Eureka as well. So we will do those together as well. Um, I'm gonna open the. Extravagant triple IPA first. It's uh, it's an O2 Citra. So the the Citra hop that built the New England IPA uh, hype train, let's say. This one is exclusively Nelson on the hot side and exclusively uh, Citra on the cold side. It had four dry hops for different moments. So we do that because we only use one hop um, to layer in more kinds of flavors and aromas. Ooh, that's, that smells pretty good. You can smell it here already. Oh, there we go. Oh, Merc Boy. Yeah, that's it, all right. So um, we use different batches of Citra hops. So if you limit yourself to one hop, it's quite hard to make it like complex. But we use different lots of Citra. We use different lots of uh, Citra Cryo as well. And there's some uh, flowable hop products in here, also Citra. This is, uh, so one of our lots of Cryo Citra is very watermelony. It's the one we also use in Crank. Actually one of our quality pointers on Crank to Juice. Ooh, so we double mesh this beer as well. Makes it super fluffy. And we use some, uh, some of you guys might have seen on the labels that there's some rice or corn sometimes. And that's really to, when we do a double mesh, if we don't use uh, lighter adjuncts, the beer becomes too dark. So that's why this one is nice and saturated, uh, hazy and super pale. Yeah, this is... Uh, watermelon and uh, citrus here we go let's uh you know what let's open the other triple ip as well because there's a fun story to it we like to work very closely to our suppliers and this time yakima asked us to launch a hop with them is hbc 1019 it's a new new variety still experimental to my palate it's uh it's very creamy, uh, almost like, like a fudgy, fudgy cream. Oh yeah, there's passion fruit. It's like uh, quite, feels like very high tiles. Kind of makes sense now that I read back what we did. There's a stylized yeast blend in there. There's a hint of coconut. It's completely different from the other triple IPA. And we paired it with Nectaron and Nelson uh, in the background, so a little bit of both really rounds it off. Because we were not super familiar with 1019 yet. We thought we'd bring some fami familiarity in there as well, just to be sure that we know what the beer is going to be. It has the creaminess, the caramelly, fudge, coconut tiness, combined with the HBC 586. There's a, the top note really is the, the HVC 586 and the creaminess comes from the, both the double mesh and the 1019. That's fun. That's good. Uh, let's quickly go over the other beers as well. 
uh, several lower ABV ones just to round off the summer. There's, uh, there's a modern West Coast, meaning it's a little bit more bitter, uh, it should be cleaner. Uh, in, in Dutch, we would say a, a bit strucker. Um, that was actually the goal of the beer. The modern twist to it is that it's super light, it's very drinkable, but we also use modern hops. Citra, Mosaic, Nelson. So our New England IPA hops into a West Coast format. Let's switch them out for the stouts and we will be right back. We have three pastry stouts. First one, cake break. Uh, it is a 10% uh, cacao, vanilla. Moet dat? We zijn aan het filmen, Rob. Ben je klaar met zaag of niet? Oké, okay, dankjewel, Rob. Where, where were we? Did you catch that? Yeah, that's nice. That was a fun little. Uh... Oh, there BMT goes for holidays in the Advent. You want to see it? We did something cool this time. Again. That's Michiel. Barrel master. He is rolling the barrels, the empty barrels for holidays. Of course, we did a happy and holidays. The rest I cannot speak of yet. But uh... so, speaking of BMTs and LMTs and additions to beers, three pastry stouts, uh, cake break. It's a caramel uh, brownie stout. So it has uh, vanilla, it has some caramel, uh, it has uh, cacao, of course. And we went for the darker kind of cacao to get the brownie flavor out. Uh, two big boys, uh, Marsman Steamroller. So we used uh, almond kernels and cherry kernels. Almond pits? Do you say pits or kernels? I think pits. To get that, that bitter almond flavor. Uh, we can open it. It's quite, quite a fun beer because it also has uh, uh, some honey. There we go. That's a nice. Ooh. Thick as you're used to. Okay. If you remember uh, Greet from our seven year anniversary, this has much of the same aroma. Oh, yeah. The, the honey gives it that simple sugar sweetness that, that it really needs to to be reminiscent of a uh, uh, marzipan but it's all balanced by very very potent espresso beans that's fun let's open the other one immediately as well because this one also has a little bit of back sweetening but in a completely different way it has uh, raisins so we steamed the raisins so we, what we do is we, we fill the addition tank uh, with raisins, then we put some hot water in there uh, so they are submerged, and then we uh, pump uh, steam into it. So it, it boils for a very long time, meaning that the, the, the raisins are completely destroyed and uh, you get kind of a molasses, which really smells like uh, muscatel. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it has the raisins, the cinnamon. And we really went for a uh, more bakery. So this is more like a simple, sweeter stout. And this is more a uh, stout with uh, a lot of toasted character. So we wanted to, to have the bakery spring out. Like the, the cinnamon bun. You go uh, to a bakery in the morning, have a coffee there, have a cinnamon bun. That's the idea for this beer. You can also see the foam is a bit darker. Yeah, that's Tonka and cinnamon. There we go. Yeah, that just Tonka to me is that almondy, toasty, bakery vibe. Yeah, great. This is you, you can you can see the foams next to each other. It has a bit more trouble coming up it's because it's a bit sweeter, and this one is a bit darker. I think that's it for the pastry stouts. Let's move on to the non-stouts. The non-stout non-IPAs. <laughs> we have a Belgian Cordoval, uh, and we have a 
Herfst block. So I will just open the Rem block first. We wanted the beer to be the darkest block on a block festival. As a reference to our stout brewery history. So we modeled it more after a Swatch beer, black lager, instead of a bock to give it our own spin. That means that the beer is a little bit more bitter than you're used to. Here we go. See, it's darker than a bock. It's almost black, but it's more brown. Oh, yeah, and it's quite hoppy. There we go. Oh, yeah, that drinks very easy. So it has quite some hops. It has some uh, chocolate malt. Those two together make it slightly bitter, slightly dry. The goal also was to make it drinkable uh, because I personally think most box are too sweet. That's why we made this. Curious to see what you think of that. Um, other beer, a Belgian Cordopel. Much more his as it should. It's higher cup and the red fruit jumps out. There we go. Oh yeah, that pours the mousse a little way. There we go. Yes, there we go. So it's a bit more uh, lemony. Um, it's the same yeast as our core range uh, quad, the Belgian Cordopel. Similar approach, but it has more hops and it has more, more cassonite sugar. So you really get the red fruit jumping out. If we compare the hops to the quad, the other beer, this is much more towards the citrusy, the rind, the peel of the citrus, instead of the other one being more, I point this one, but I don't, don't mean this one. Um, the quad is much more peppery uh, in hop character. Yep, yeah, well, huge body for a quadruple. It also has much better head retention if you look at that. So usually the quadruple has a quite a coarse head because it's super high carbonated and it's a thin beer. Even though it's a high ABV beer, this beer is it has a moose little twist to it. It's uh, completely covered in foam, foam that you are used to see more on barley wines, maybe. From us then. Yeah, that's great. Rest my case. Next, always have a nice story about the Eurekas because there's very elaborate thought process behind it. Why we want to try something, why we think it's going to be great. I just heard that I should compare the quadruple mesh stout to the Belgian quadruple um, because they both have the word quadruple and they both in the sense mean something else. So the Belgian quadruple refers to the style, so the Belgian beer style. Single, double, triple, quadruple. Uh, and here, quadruple means we did something four times. Oh, I shook it a little bit too much, I think, but there we go. No, no worries. So, what happens when you mess some, mesh something four times? You have four times the flavor. So, it is super malty, what I expect. That's insane body. There's just so much malt going into that beer. Yeah, that's great. That's that's great. But I, I wanted to show that the quadruple in those two beers means something else. This is in succession of the quadruple match wheat wine we did last box. From the top of my head, last box. We want to try it on the stout as well. I personally think that it makes a huge difference, especially in beers that are that don't get adjuncts. It makes a huge difference in body, in flavor intensity. But this is the also talks about meshes. But the most important part is the active fermentation dry hops. Usually at Moorstotel we do only cold dry hops, multiple temperatures. But that means that the yeast has dropped out from the tank. What we expect here is a fruitier and drier beer because you get something that's called hop creep meaning that there's enzymes in the hops that make your yeast eat more of the sugar that's available the other point from this is active fermentation dry hops 
that you get an interaction between the yeast and the hops, also flavor-wise. Uh, that's something called biotransformation. I think we talked about it in the video about tylized yeast. That's also a sort of biotransformation, but there's much more happening. It's a yeast making flavors out of different flavors, is the idea. So this double mashed, thick, 8% ABV. Let me check, 8% ABV. And all the hops went in when the yeast was still active. Last beer, you know what it is. <laughs> Indulgence 21, there you are, baby. Let's see, there we go. Oh, oh. Chocolate cake. We never do adjuncts in indulgence. I'm a bit confused. It's very, very, very chocolatey. Milk chocolate, fudge kind of chocolate. Last time we had more of a, what was it, 19? One of them was more like the, the grandma's cocoa. This is completely different. It's more milky, milky, milky chocolate. I would say there's some big caramel notes as well. Vanilla. Hello, bourbon. There you are. Oh yeah, the brandy. Makes it smooth, makes it very friendly. Bourbon sometimes has an edge to it because it's a grain distillate. Brandy is a fruit distillate. This is, this is great. There's, a, there, there's something I have a hard time picking out. Yeah, there's so, something uh, yeast estuary or something that a yeast, not with stout, uh, there's a part of this uh, base beer that's uh, not stout. Somehow you can pick, pick that out because it has something more uh, yeast character. Yeast uh, usually comes out more in beers that don't have roast. They, they express themselves a little bit more. So that's why we, we put a barley wine on barrels or a multi-grain wine on barrels with an English yeast because it really gives something extra. And that's what I was picking up here. That's fun. It makes it a little bit more interesting than your usual brandy and bourbon beer. It makes me go back because it's interesting. Super smooth, by the way. You want to taste as well? Super layered. It's super layered, yeah. That's because it's not only stout, but there's part of it is also multi-grain wine. That one is on Wyoming whiskey or bourbon with an English yeast. You get a little bit of a that fruitiness, uh, and then the stout was on brandy barrels, which makes it super smooth and super layered. So I'm gonna probably go back to brewing the advent calendar now. We are now in the midst of fermentation, packaging. Uh, the stouts are all packaged already, working on the IPAs now. So uh, are there still boxes available? Yeah, a pair. Just a couple. Get in there before it's too late. Um, and I'm gonna say, Prost Leut Lars. This is wel geniaal hoor. This is wel mooi spul.